finally tonight, a second act for the new leader of Italy and to Gwen Ifill. Italy's next prime minister, businessman tycoon Silvio Berlusconi, yesterday appeared on one of the television networks he owns to proclaim victory. You asked for a government that lasts a full five years, and you did it with a clear indication of change. Berlusconi is a $13 billion man who has compared himself to Napoleon, but he has overcome criticism at home and abroad of his ties to right-wing groups and of allegations of corruption. On Sunday, his political coalition defeated a center-left alliance led by Francesco Rutelli, a former mayor of Rome, to lead what will be Italy's 59th post-war government. The results came after a long election night, some polling stations staying open till four in the morning to accommodate long lines of voters. The colorful Berlusconi, who some call the Cavalier, is the richest man in Italy and the 14th richest in the world. His fortune includes three national television stations, a publishing company which controls a third of the magazine and book markets, and a popular professional soccer team. Critics have said his business ties will inevitably conflict with his government responsibilities. During the campaign, Berlusconi ran on five promises, more jobs, more public works, higher pensions, lower taxes, and less bureaucracy. He said he would accomplish all this in five years or resign. In one television interview before the election, Italy's top capitalist also pledged a closer relationship with the U.S. I am called the American. I'm blamed with having brought American culture into Italy and Europe, like with private TV stations. I open the doors to American products. Therefore, from my point of view, I want to have a cordial relationship with the USA, to be, in Europe, the closest and best friend of America. The first reaction from official Washington was positive. We would, uh, first of all, congratulate Mr. Berlusconi and his coalition on the apparent victory Sunday in the... Italian parliamentary elections. Uh, we are confident that the United States will continue to enjoy a cooperative and fruitful relationship with the next Italian government. But in parts of Europe, political and media leaders in France, Spain, Belgium, and Great Britain worried that the center-right coalition might also promote anti-immigrant policies. Over the years, Berlusconi has also been charged with corruption, false accounting, tax fraud, bribing a judge, and other violations. Three convictions have been overturned, but others are still pending. Before the election, an editorial in The Economist, a British magazine, declared Berlusconi unfit for the job, saying, The known facts rule him out for high office. The election of Mr. Berlusconi as prime minister would mark a dark day for Italian democracy and the rule of law. Berlusconi's party will now control a sizable majority in both houses of the Italian parliament. Joining us now for analysis of Italy's new prime minister are Mario Calvo Platero, U.S. editor of the Milan Financial Daily, Il Sole 24 Ore. Daniel Serrer, who was deputy chief of mission at the U.S. Embassy in Rome before, from 1990 to 1993, and before that its economics minister. He's now with the U.S. Institute of Peace. And Alexander Stilla, author and journalist who writes frequently about Italy, the country where his father was born. He is the author of Excellent Cadavers, The Mafia and the Death of the First Italian Republic. Mr. Serwer, uh, colorful doesn't seem to quite capture Silvio Berlusconi. Tell us a little bit about him. He's certainly the triumph of image and popular appeal over the traditions of Italian uh, politics. Italy was once known as a partitocracy, a country run by parties. It wasn't run by by colorful personalities like this. This election seems to have ended that and created really something quite new for the Italians, though Americans are quite familiar with this kind of politics. Mr. Stilla, what's your take on Silvio Berlusconi? Well, he's uh, an extremely telegenic and uh, charismatic figure. Uh, I think the problem is not really with his uh, programs, which are fairly standard uh, conservative uh, programs of cutting taxes and limiting government. The problem is represented, I think, by the exceptional situation of a man who owns the three largest private television networks and will now control the three uh, large public networks, which gives him effectively control over 90% of the television audience. Uh, the other problems are, are posed by uh, some of the things you mentioned in your 
film segment, uh, which are the fact that he is uh, the criminal defendant in a number of rather important uh, investigations, uh, which are very serious and, and should be uh, allowed to proceed uh, um, without uh, interference. And it's very difficult to understand how someone can both uh, be a criminal defendant and rewrite the Italian penal code, how they can help Italy become a modern economy and own uh, significant portions of the private economy. Mr. Platero, you were home in Italy for the election. Give us a sense of how he is viewed by people who cast votes in this election, how someone with all of these issues that we've just heard, ha had outlined, how he came to win. Well, as you can imagine, all of these issues have been part for months of the political debate in Italy. For years, probably, Mr. Berlusconi was already prime minister and then lost his coalition and basically had to leave his position. So Italy has been very familiar for quite a while with his uh, problems and potential conflict of interest. But, uh, so these are facts and issues that are being discovered now, presumably, by the large international public because he's been elected. But the mood in Italy at this point is to look beyond this. Even the uh, opposition party leaders have declared that the elections have been perfectly legitimate and uh, uh, the people are those that go to uh, vote and uh, not newspapers like, like the economists that may be less familiar with some of the issues than the Italian people. So the Italian people are now looking forward and hoping that he will do what he's promised and keep his word. Were the elections as raucous and chaotic as they seemed to be from us looking at it from this direct, from this I, I'm distance? afraid they were. I'm afraid they were. There were uh, huge lines. Uh, that was one of the consequences of trying to uh, cut expenses. And so they decided to cut from 60,000 uh, polls to 30,000. So that created, hu created huge uh, lines. And uh, uh, the polls were supposed to be closed at 10 o'clock. And uh, uh, I think in the southern Italy, in Calabria, the last voter uh, exited the poll at 5 a.m. But everybody got a chance to vote in the end, even if it was uh, rather um, strange and tiring. Mr. Serwer, as we just saw, Silvio Berlusconi made a lot of promises, a lot of very optimistic promises. What are, is the likelihood that he can begin to even keep them? I think it's going to be difficult. Uh, Italy uh, has a tight budgetary situation. He's promised to increase expenditure and cut taxes. That's also a message that might be familiar to us. But Italy has a lot less flexibility, also because it has to stay within Europe and within the rules of, of the new European currency, the euro. And I think, uh, really, the flexibility is quite limited, and he's going to have a rough time delivering everything. How different is this uh, Berlusconi reign going to be from the 1994, when he was in office for seven months and then gone? Well, it looks like he's in office in a much more solid way this time. His coalition is uh, is together in a way that it wasn't previously and he doesn't apparently depend on the votes from Umberto Bossi, the, the, uh, the Italian political leader who withdrew his support and caused the last Berlusconi government to fall. I think we're about to see probably the strongest Italian political uh, uh, leader uh, in a long time, maybe since Mussolini. Mr. Stiller, what's your reaction to that? Do you think this, he has a, a potential to be a very strong political leader in Italy? Uh, yes, I think so. I think, as, as Daniel mentioned, uh, he enters power this time with a much stronger majority and uh, clearly with the validation of the Italian public. Um, I think that doesn't entirely uh, do away with, the, with the, the, the problems that he's likely to encounter um, in the day-to-day -day governing when, uh, through the problem of conflict of interest. It's almost impossible for Berlusconi to take any measure without um, in some way either benefiting or damaging his own private interests. Because he owns the television stations, the newspapers? Well, and also and financial companies and so forth. The, the previous government, for example, took, made a law that, um, that limited discounting of books to 15% below the cover price. If that had been done by Berlusconi's government, immediately there would have been accusations of, uh, of self-dealing. Uh, the many people have discussed the need to privatize part of the state TV uh, empire. It would be very difficult for Berlusconi, as the owner of the three private stations, to oversee that process. What should he do to overcome these tr the, the potential for conflict of interest? Well, I think the example actually was set by the Bush administration. Everyone in the Bush administration, from the president, the vice president, on down, sold all of their private interests and all of their stock and stock options. Uh, on um, 
um, coming into power, I think the, the, the norm there was that uh, serving in government is a great privilege and that there should be no suspicion um, that your public actions are in some way uh, benefiting your private interest. I think that should be anything short of total divestment of all of his uh, holdings would uh, leave him open to the problem of conflict of interest. Uh, mm -hmm. And this, I think, should uh, be uh, the standard as opposed to a kind of fake uh, divestment of the kind that Berlusconi has engaged in in the past. He was, for example, obliged by a previous antitrust law to sell uh, the daily newspaper Il Giornale, based in Milan. He, quote-unquote, sold it to his brother Paolo, and it remains essentially a Berlusconi newspaper and is mm -hmm. uh, vehemently partisan in favor of Berlusconi and his party. Mr. Platero, what about Mr. Berlusconi's politics? There have been so many questions raised about his, for instance, his first congratulatory phone call came from Jörg Haider from Austria, who was condemned by the European Union for his right-wing views, and he has other internal domestic political ties of the same sort. Do you think that that's something that would dog him? Uh, in a way, yes, uh, but for uh, different reasons. Uh, the problem is that some of the smaller parties in his coalition are old-style right-wing parties, and we have many of those in, in Europe. We have them in, in France, we have them in Germany, that are uh, very much in favor of, st of, of statalism, statalism, uh, of, of state ownership. Uh, so they will resist uh, some of the measures that Mr. Berlusconi would like to uh, bring forward. Uh, but the fact that uh, he has uh, got uh, quite a strong majority will uh, probably give him uh, much more of a hand than he had in the past. And some of those parties also have evolved. So uh, the policies uh, will be tried. Uh, we have to see and watch whether he's going to be able to succeed. He's always said that uh, being as rich as he is, he's only a uh, objective is to try to make it Italy better. So, you know, we have to see now if he's going to do it for sure. But Mr. Server, what about these outstanding corruption charges, which still have, are pending, still have not been resolved? Well, I think uh, that could cause him serious problems if some of them are resolved uh, in a way that, that uh, makes him guilty in the final court of appeals, which is the way the uh, Italian system works. You're not guilty until the last court is decided. Uh, but look, this is a, certainly a threat to decency, but it's not a threat to democracy. Italy has strong democratic institutions. Even this problem that Alexander refers to of his ownership of uh, a vast business empire, I agree there is no avoiding conflict of interests as long as he owns that. Uh, but that can be dealt with through the Italian institutions as well, it seems to me. Uh, this, uh, it's, a, it's something uh, interesting has happened within Italy, but I don't think the United States or even other Euro Europeans should be terribly concerned about it. Mr. Stillo, from the U.S. point of view, we look at this election and we think 58 different changes of government since World War II. Why does it happen that way in Italy? Well, I think, first of all, um, that figure can be a little misleading because um, in, there actually is an election every five years to elect a new parliament, and many of these governments are governments that are patched together that are essentially uh, similar to the ones that precede them. I suspect, I mean, the, the center-left uh, government that, that ruled for the last five years had uh, two or even three different governments, but it was, it was basically the same team in place. I expect that you'll see that here, too. But it's true that there's an enormous amount of instability as a result of the, the Italian constitution that was put into place after World War II. There was great fear of a return of fascism and fear of a strong man who would dominate the political scene. And so they put into place a proportional electoral system, which led to a large number of parties and a lot of uh, fragile coalitions that uh, would quickly fall apart. Um, people have been working to try to, uh, there was a reform of this in 1993, and the current uh, electoral system mm -hmm. um, that was just used seems to be producing a slightly more stable kind of uh, majority than, uh, than we've seen. Um, there are still uh, proposals out there to, to reform it. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, further, just, but uh, at mm -hmm. the moment, I think, uh, and, and Berlusconi himself uh, and his 
principal partner, Alianza Nacional, and the National Alliance, have proposals out there to promote a kind of presidential system, giving more power to the executive. And Mr. Platero, what do you think will be the outcome of this instability on this new prime minister? Well, I think that uh, he, um, um, you know, I, I think that we should think in terms uh, of what Italy is. I mean, one should not forget that Italy is uh, the fifth largest industrial uh, uh, country in the world that has uh, quite a solid system, that there is a president uh, of the republic, Mr. Ciampi, uh, who was elected uh, two years ago by the parliament, who's a very solid person and, and a great guarantor, and he will certainly provide uh, the underlying stability that is needed, both to protect uh, uh, Mr. Berlusconi from uh, political attacks uh, that could be related from his conflict of interest, and the opposition or the Italian people from uh, um, uh, Mr. Berlusconi taking advantage of his position. Mm -hmm. So we have a bit of a guarantee over there. Oh. And, and mm -hmm. sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say thank you very much. We're out of time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.